Now, I think at this point, I've kind of said this way too much, but the Galaxy S23 Ultra is phone of the year. Easily. Now, ever since February 2023, from the very moment that I opened the Galaxy S23 Ultra, used it for like a week, and took a break from my iPhone and Pixel, I was very confident that it was going to take a lot for the upcoming 15 Pro Max and Pixel 8 Pro to beat out this phone. And here we are, 9 months later, it still has a phenomenal display, still has a great battery life, still has amazing features that excite me, and it is still one of the best phones that I've used in the past 3 years. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm genuinely curious to see where Samsung takes the Ultra series. I personally feel like they've damn near perfected it to the point where I will say that they only can go down from here. There's genuinely not much that I've found wrong with this phone, and not only have I had fun with it, but the only problem that I have is that I wish it could be complemented with a better watch, because the OS on Galaxy watches have been awful when compared to the Pixel watch and Apple watch. And I don't want to spend hours upon hours talking about how great the s23 ultra is but instead i'd rather share my experience to show you guys how it holds up after nine months of use now arguably the most important piece of hardware that you can have on your smartphone is a good battery and that's where the galaxy s23 ultra doesn't disappoint since i've gotten this phone nine months ago i've only put my s23 ultra through medium to high usage i will admit that i have limited my screen time from eight hours a day to about five to six and i've also had days where i didn't need to charge my galaxy s23 ultra because it was on 30 to 40 percent by the end of the day and the best part about it is that if i needed to be somewhere early in the morning i will wake up put my s23 ultra on a 45 watt fast charger get ready and by the time i was done my phone will be on 100 percent and ready to go and that was one of the great things about the s23 ultra not only did the battery last a long time but it was also charging extremely fast 45 watt fast charging charges from 0 to 100 in just under an hour and it always took me over an hour to get ready so i was satisfied all across the board also i would never use power saving mode on my s23 ultra day in and day out i was confident that i was able to last all day as long as my phone was on at least 60 to 70 percent so during my time of using Using my s23 ultra i have 5g on my brightness is on manual and always medium to high with always on display on i'm using every power heavy app as much as i can and again i never really use power saving mode now taking a look at design and build quality i can't lie to you guys i mainly use cases to protect my phone so it damn near looks brand new but the only thing that i didn't protect was the screen and personally i think that it handles scratches better than my pixel and iphone right here you can see that it does have slight smudges on parts of the screen but it doesn't really bother me I really hate curved screen protectors, so I really just had to thug it out. The S23 Ultra has this very boxy frame that complements my hand very well. It's not as comfortable as my Pixel 8 Pro, but aesthetically, I've always enjoyed the boxiness much more. The S23 Ultra's curves come at a minimum. I love how the edge is bent, but not as much as any other phone that uses curved displays. It also feels pretty heavy in comparison to the Pixel 8 Pro, but feels around the same as the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Personally, heavy phones have always felt much better to me since it gives me a very premium feel. But besides the massive size and sharp curves, the S23 Ultra has really mastered that Samsung very chill machine type of look. The buttons and ports were very clicky and sturdy, and the frame was very big. Now looking at display, the S23 Ultra has held up extremely well, never lost its punchiness, it never lost its brightness, and it never lost its quality over the past 9 months. I loved how I had the tiny hole punch camera to really maximize the screen. I also use swipe gestures, so basically, I have the full screen to fill in whatever I'm doing, whether it's watching a movie, playing a game, or just scrolling through my Twitter timeline. The S23 Ultra also has Gorilla Glass Victus 2 on the back and on the display, so if you're bold enough to use your phone without a case, the S23 Ultra will survive a few drops before you notice any damage, but just a heads up, do not try to drop it on concrete because, again, most phones will crack on the first few drops. But durability isn't the only thing that's great about the S23 Ultra's display. It's very bright, sharp, and premium when compared to the 15 Pro Max and Pixel 8 Pro. The brightness was pretty much the same as last year's S22 Ultra with 1750 nits. I was able to see everything very clearly no matter how bright I got outside. Now arguably, my favorite thing about the display was the 120Hz refresh rate. Watching content on this phone is the best in the game. The size, boxy screen, curved edges, and Dolby Atmos dual speakers creates that immersive experience when it comes to sound, and it still holds up the same as when I first bought it. The ultrasonic fingerprint sensor is still very sharp and works as pristine as it did earlier in the year. And the facial recognition is sharp as well, but I really don't use it as much since I do prefer the fingerprint scanner. Now, I have to be completely honest with you guys because this review is reflective on my experience. During my daily use with the Galaxy S23 Ultra, the S Pen has only come out of my phone about 10 times over the past 9 months. I don't really use it, and personally, I think that it's really nice to have, but I don't see myself ever needing to use it again. Now moving on to camera, the Galaxy S23 Ultra has actually been improving in certain aspects, and by certain aspects, 
I mean shutter speed. Taking a look at regular photos first, everything still looks very bright and vibrant. Samsung still likes to turn the sharpness all the way up to the max. But other than that, the pictures look really good. Night mode photos are very good as well. Everything is not only very bright, but it's also very clear. And I personally like the S23 Ultra's night photos more than my 8 Pro and 15 Pro Max. The S23 Ultra easily has not only the best zoom photos in the game, but also the biggest zoom out of any camera in the US market. And as you can see, I took pictures in different modes and even at 10x, it was very clear and crisp mixed with the software. Even when looking at 100 times zoom, the software was able to make it very clear. The quality is not there just yet, but it has improved since the S21 Ultra. Selfies were very bright. Like I always say, the S23 Ultra made my skin a little bit lighter than it should have, but at the end of the day, it's still a pretty good selfie. Now the videos on my S23 Ultra were very sharp as well. They have improved slightly since last year while still being a beast on the spec sheet. You can shoot videos up to 8K. It looks really good, but I just prefer to shoot my videos in 4K since it takes up less space. The stabilization was solid, pans were smooth along with brightness and contrast, and the sharpening is still top tier. And I want to give you guys some of my footage from videos that I've taken over the past 9 months. And alright you guys, that's it for my review on the Galaxy S23 Ultra after 9 months of use. The best phone of 2023. And if you guys feel the same, type MVP in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys on the next one. Peace.